airing out his feelings when there's a mistake on the practice field. Head coach Robert Sala brought up Rogers' sometimes fiery mentality, saying, quote, the expectation and the standard is high, end quote, when it comes to Aaron. Uh, last time we saw Rogers for a full season, he ranked 26 league-wide in total QBR. His final pass, you might remember that year, it was a pick. And that was that home loss to the Lions that kept Green Bay out of the playoffs. So, uh, Kevin, should we still consider, you think, uh, Aaron Rodgers elite when we talk about quarterback. Very few rules in life, but if you're 40 and coming off an Achilles injury, you are not elite. You have a lot to prove. I'm not bothered by any of these sideline arguments, whatever you want to call them. I think that he, he holds himself to a high standard. I also think he uses training camp Rodgers to test himself and figure out who we can trust, what guys are going to react to what. And I'm not bothered by any of this stuff. Having said that, not only is he not elite, he doesn't have to be, okay? He has earned the right to go out here and prove that he can solve the problems of Aaron Rodgers, the GM, Aaron Rodgers, the OC, Aaron Rodgers, the head coach, Aaron Rodgers, the Egyptologist, all of the problems that he's <laughs> created over the past, I don't know, year or so, he gets to go solve them by being a decent quarterback. The defense is going to be the reason they make the playoffs. The defense is going to be the reason if Rodgers is the 13th best quarterback in the NFL that they compete with the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC. They have a path towards that. There's an argument to be made that every level of the Jets defense is the best in the league. Defensive line, linebacker, secondary. You can make that argument. Aaron Rodgers does not have to be elite. He has to be a better quarterback than what they gave last year, which is pretty much the, the only scenario possible as long as he's healthy, and he has to not make mistakes. So he's not elite, doesn't have to be. Okay. Uh, Hawk, what are your thoughts? Do, should we still consider Aaron Rodgers elite? As a 40-year-old quarterback, his health is not elite. It just can't be. That's not how nature works. I also question his leadership. Do I think he's an elite leader? I would say no for a lot of the reasons that we talked about and the concerns within the Jets organization and previously with the Packers. As it pertains to playing the quarterback position, I don't think there's a world if his physical abilities are even a sliver of what we've seen over the last, we'll call it five years, where he's not an elite quarterback because He's made it to that world. When you look at a player, you got to look over the lifetime and the, and the cycle of their career. Early on, the beginning part, you're relying solely on physical abilities. Now towards the middle, second contract and beyond, that's where your prime is because now you have the expertise of experience and your physical ability still intact. And then there are the anomalies later on that once everybody else loses their physical abilities and they're only relying on the mental aspect of the game, they maintain that elite status. Those are the LeBron Jameses, the Tom Brady's, because they are so mentally ahead of everybody else in the game, it is very easy for them to be successful. Aaron Rodgers has been in the league for almost 20 years. He has been going against these NFL defenses that he sees year in and year out longer than a lot of the guys he's playing against have even picked up a football. So there is no defense that this very fast linebacker or safety or new coordinator are going to throw at him where he doesn't say, hey, not only do I know what you're doing, I know exactly where the hole in this defense is. I know how you're teaching your linebacker, your defensive end. And that's why you see the success of the Tom Brady's, LeBron James's, even at the age they are now because they are so cerebral and they've seen everything a million times. So because of that, Aaron Rodgers is still, by all you know, reports from camp, He's still Aaron Rodgers with the football. He's still Aaron Rodgers with his arm. He's still Aaron Rodgers there. Mentally, there's no way he can't be elite. Mm. Would, listening to Hawks say that, it took me back to when you were playing with the Jets. You had a guy named Brett Favre. Mm. Same thing, older type quarterback there. Mm -hmm. Everybody said he can still throw that thing. Mm -hmm. Should we consider Aaron Rodgers elite? I think from the neck up, he's elite. I think – the reason the Jets went out there and rebuilt their office line because they knew if we if we want to have any shot, we got to protect this guy. Listen, quarterback older quarterbacks don't get healthier; mm -hmm. they just don't. Like it, that's just the matter. That's just the fact of it all. But when I look at Aaron Rodgers, kind of looking at like John Elway at the end mm -hmm. of his career, where you don't have to be an MVP. Mm -hmm. You have parts around you that can carry you to carry you over the threshold. Yep. Kevin talked about it. Jets arguably could have had the best defense in the National Football League this year. They have a Garrett Wilson. They have a tr true bona fide number one. How about they Brees have Hall? Brees Hall, yep. who is, you know, for anyone out there, Brees Hall is probably going to light it up this year. Yeah. And so for any physical misgivings that or, you know, diminishes that he has on the, on, from, his, from, the, you know, from the physical aspect because of the Achilles, I think, I think he more than makes it up 
from the from the neck or from the mental aspect, and I think from the surrounding cast of characters that the Jets have on his roster. You know, we we keep talking about what he's got around mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me from where you are, but Caleb Williams. Sure. Mm -hmm. So does Aaron Rodgers have the best cast of characters around him? Because we always say that it seems like when we talk about Chicago and Caleb Williams, is it Aaron Rodgers and the Jets? They have upgraded considerably on offense. I think Malachi Corley as the addition there this offseason too, giving him another weapon. Yeah, absolutely. When you take a look at like other supporting cast, I mean, Detroit's in there. Uh, certainly what C.J. Stroud has around him in Houston. Aaron Rodgers, yeah, top five supporting cast for sure. I want to think about the word elite, though. And I actually did some research on what I said about a month ago when I was asked on this show, the elite quarterbacks that we have in the NFL. Because I'm all about accountability. Yes. I don't want to be flip-flopping, yeah, like giving you like five names one day, two names sure. the other day. So I said the elite quarterbacks in the NFL – Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. This was said on July 5th, 2024. I don't have Aaron Rodgers in there, and it's kind of what you said about Brett Favre that, that made me think about why I don't. The quarterback, four quarterbacks I have classified as elite quarterbacks are quarterbacks who can produce in, like independently of the supporting cast element, independently of circumstances, oftentimes independently of play calling. If you have the, if you have to couch it as Aaron Rodgers can still do X, Y, Z, yeah. he's still good at this, he's still good at that, and we're talking about the category of being elite, you don't have to couch somebody being elite as oh they can still get here because you're 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 saying that there is a reason why they don't just automatically rise to the top of that list. So with the way Rodgers has, you know, and I, you, he's two seasons now removed from the back-to-back -back MVPs. If we get that version of him this season, which I don't, I don't know if it exists. I know what Robert Sala said, that it looks like he hasn't missed any time. I don't know how much validity you end up putting into that. I love the brother said, brother said he's fearless. Uh, our friends, by the way, ESPN Bet, currently have Hurts tied with Jordan Love for the six mm -hmm. shortest odds to win the MVP. You know, Hurts was the MVP runner-up in 2022 when he led the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Kevin, you, give me your thoughts here. You think Hurts going to be a uh, contender for MVP this season? I love his mindset, the fearless mindset. There's a lot to be fearful of this year. Let's start with Jason Kelsey, who may have been the best center in football last year, leaving. He was such a vital part of that tush push, the short yardage stuff, and then also the protections. He's, he, Jason Kelsey was a part of every single protection for over a decade in Philadelphia. All of a sudden, that's more pressure on the interior line in Philadelphia. That's more pressure on Jalen Hurts. They were in a tailspin last year in Philadelphia. They had no answers against the blitz. Again, that, that, that offense never had a second pitch. I don't think Sirianni, Sirianni had any answers. There was a reason Philadelphia was flirting with Bill Belichick. That seems very, very real. Um, to me, Jalen Hurts is not an MVP candidate. I think it's a bit of a joke, frankly, that Jordan Love would have the same odds as Jalen Hurts. I think Jordan Love is ascending, and, and Jalen Hurts is going to stay the same, maybe, from last year. I just didn't see a lot. Jordan Love, at the beginning of, from the beginning of last year until the end, grew in front of our eyes and developed into the best deep passer in football by the end of the year. What did Jalen Hurts get better at last year? I didn't see anything. I saw a team with no answers, an offense with no answers, and everything that was th thrown at them, they didn't have anything for. And so that, to me, concerns me a lot. I don't think anybody in the NFC East can win the Super Bowl, uh, but I, I don't like this Eagles team in particular. You know, you go back to a couple of seasons ago, Big Wood, and he had, as we talked about, in, an MVP type of season. Everyone thought, was this just a blip or is this a guy who was really ascending? And, and you, you remember he had 10 touchdowns and just two picks when he was blitzed that season. Mm -hmm. Last year, if you look at his numbers, five touchdowns and NFL worst, eight of uh, those picks when he was blitzed. Give me your thoughts. He NFL MVP candidate this season? No, I mean, and for me, I have a lot of guys that I, I will put above Jalen Hurst mm -hmm. right now. Listen, I think for me, it's a, co it's a couple things. Number one, when I look at guys who are MVP candidates, I look at continuity. Mm -hmm. Continuity between play calling and, and quarterback. We, you know, we got, you know, Joy, Jordan Love, okay? Matt LaFleur, one of the best play callers that we, we have. Bobby Sloyd and, and, and mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud, like the, the Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. Like the list goes on and on and on. And so that's, that's number one for me. And then I think number two, here's a question I have for Kellen Moore. I think when, when Jalen Hurts is at his best is when the RPO game, when he's running the football. 
Tell me when Kellen Moore really operated in that realm consistently, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be during his time in Dallas or when he was with the Los Angeles Chargers, you know, you know, out there with Justin Herbert. That's, I, I just think that if you're not operating in that realm with Jalen Hurst, that run-pass option game, you're doing him a disservice. And so I think that's a big question mark. And then obviously you talk about the blitz. They didn't have any answers. They didn't have any answers last year. Is Kellen Moore going to be able to provide the answers, to, you know, to – uh, Jalen Hurst, in order to you know remedy that, because you you best believe people going to people going to continue to do that until he demonstrates that he's past that. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love was the best player in football last year against the Blitz. That's why I'm so surprised they had the same odds. And the growth in front of our eyes was astounding. I asked Matt LaFleur a couple months ago, I said, hey, what's the best throw that Jordan Love had last year? He mentioned the throw to Wicks in the playoff game against Dallas. It was a cover zero look, and he checked into it, and he threw that touchdown pass. Two years ago, he started in Kansas City. He could not handle the cover zero Blitz. And what happened? He got better. The coaching staff understood, kind of taught him the protections, all of that stuff. And I just feel like now he can handle anything thrown at him. Jalen Hurts is getting worse against the Blitz, and that's just two ships passing in the night to me. You know, it's interesting, Courtney, hearing him, what he just said. All you heard from the Eagles was they were saying that they didn't trust what the coordinators were calling last season. That was a lot of the mantra yeah. coming out of that Eagles locker How room. quickly you guys forget. I mean, this guy was an MVP candidate runner-up two years ago, 2022. Mm -hmm an MVP candidate through the first three quarters of the season last year before that tailspin, they're one and six, he gets injured. There is a complete disconnect between play caller and head coach, which affects the quarterback. New, head, new, new play caller, new quarterbacks coach. And I want to bring this to Dak, actually. Because remember when Dak led the league in interceptions in 2022? What did he do last year? Turns that part of his game around, finishes as the runner-up for the MVP. Jalen Hurts had 15 interceptions, five fumbles lost last year. Obviously, those aren't great numbers. He still threw for 23 touchdowns and ran in 15 more. If you have numbers like that within this offense, even an offense that has Saquon Barkley in it, I do think he will end up getting – have more, finished with more rushing touchdowns than his running back considering mm -hmm. those goal line situations. And, yes, the RPO game, Woody, I'm with you on that. Like, I think they have to bring that element back into this offense because without it last year – they did not feel like the Philadelphia Eagles that went to the Super Bowl and, and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kansas City Chiefs. Jalen Hurts has the weapons around him. This is still a good unit up front in the trenches, and it's still a good defense. All of those things factor into a player's MVP campaign. And by the time this is all said and done, Jordan Love, sure, will be an MVP candidate. But there's not, like, candidate means more than one. It means multiple players who are going to be vying for this award the way that we've seen Jalen Hurts do the last two seasons. Hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully that's not an issue like he had last season. You know, it's interesting that she said that you need to get that run pass option back because mm -hmm. that's when Jalen Hurts mm -hmm. was at his best. Wasn't that the downfall and the biggest? Or I know as a Cowboy fan, they kept saying that about Kellen Moore. Why is he chucking the football all over the field and not yep. run the football? We, it, that was, you know, his whole time in Dallas. Like, hey, listen, Kellen Moore in that, in that office in, in Dallas, they were always one of, one of the top offices in the league. But one of the things that, that drove me crazy watching the Cowboys at the same time was they never ran Dak. Mm -hmm. They never ran Dak in the RPO game. And it just, you know, it just frustrated you like crazy. And that's, to me, the more, one of the more interesting points as we, you know, get the football season started is how much RPO game are they going to run with Kellen Moore and Jalen Hurts? Because, again, I think that when you run the, the RPO, it kind of sets the table for – Jalen Hurst to have the type of success that you want him to have at the quarterback position. Yeah.